Let's go to the council chamber. And we'll also get introduced to another feature of this game here. Elevator rides. They're basically used to mask loading screens. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't, sir. Come on. Have a little faith in your uh, elected representatives. Not that I do, but still. Like I said, Udina is kind of an arse. Yeah, so we get these really long elevator rides in multiple places in the game. They are used to disguise the loading of new areas. And also have music. This particular piece really reminds me of the music in uh, Portal for some reason. And one of the nice things about the elevator rides on the Citadel at least is that you get to uh, hear some conversations between your crew members and also news items sometimes. The council chambers themselves are another location that I love. They are very impressive looking. Hey, Executor Palin. How did he get here before us? I guess while we were goofing around with uh, Avina, he snuck by us. He's talking to another Turian called Garrus. Wonder what's going on here. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. I got the impression he doesn't like Saren. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. They got a fountain here. Nice. And the trees and everything. It's quite an impressive location. What are those cherry trees? They kind of look like them. I doubt it, though. Alien cherry trees. You sure have to climb a lot of stairs to reach the council. I think that's supposed to be symbolic of their importance. Might be. I don't know. Maybe they just like stairs. All in the sounding music here. Music in this game was actually written by uh, someone who's familiar to my viewers, namely Jack Wall. The Ballers won't be joining the council for years. I'm not so sure. The humans are making a strong push, and you can bet the Ballers will be right on their coattails if they succeed. Allowing the humans to join us is a sound strategic move. But the Ballers? No. The Hanna are likely to be next, then the Elcor. You may be right, though the Hanar need to lighten up a bit first. You just don't like them because you have trouble understanding them. And who doesn't have trouble understanding the Hanar? We'll see them later. You can overhear conversations in various places in this game. Um, as I was saying, the music was written by uh, Jack Wall, or at least he's one of the composers of this game. Who also wrote the music for Mist 3 and 4. Not that you can really tell. Very different style he uses here. Another keeper is sitting here doing nothing. I guess the council is up here. There's an exclamation point there, which indicates there's a story related uh, event <laughs> there on the uh, radar. Ah, I see Captain Anderson is waiting for us. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. 
An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre, and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. I didn't let anything get destroyed. Also, it sounds like Captain Anderson and Saren have somewhat of a history. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren um, does not like humans. We'll let him, we won't let him get away with that, though. You can expect me to kill you the next time we meet. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that! That's not his decision! Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? I don't think anything we uh, can say is going to convince them at this point. You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. What we need is evidence! The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. That went well. Not. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. But what can we do as long as the Council is protecting him and he is still a Spectre? What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. That could be a good lead. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. Come on, Odina. You have no right to talk to the Captain that way. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Yeah, the bartender at the Embassy Bar mentions uh, mentioned that sounds like he might be a bit of a sketchy lead though hopefully there's other ways maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. you should talk to barla vaughn over in the financial district rumor has it he's an agent for the shadow broker the shadow broker an information dealer buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder 
I've heard Balavan's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. Well, at least uh, we have an alternative, if Harkin doesn't work out. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience, no hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Well, sometimes that is unavoidable, but it should be a last resort. Not something you do without second thought. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Okay, we can drill a bit deeper into some of these topics. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game, and the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics, doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone, not directly. He's just a resource we can use, or she is, or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Okay, that's vague. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. I don't know. I don't think uh, Udina actually gets along with anyone. Not really the council's fault in this particular case. Maybe they'd let us join the council if we were more willing to cooperate with the other species. Of course they would. If we did everything they told us to, they'd love to have us on the council. But it wouldn't be much of a deal for us. I understand their side. They don't want us dominating the council. It's founded on cooperation and alliances. But we have to look out for our own interests, too. I suppose. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense, the final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a specter shows up, you know something big is about to happen. Yeah, we definitely saw direct proof of that one. How do they decide who becomes a specter? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Specters aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done, like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation, but with him gone, 
Things are still up in the air. Indeed, and CERN definitely isn't in favor of it, so that isn't going to help. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. Sounds like a recipe for disaster for, uh, to me. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. But before we can convince the Council to do that, or something like it, we'll have to prove that Saren is working with the GIF. Tell me about Barlavon. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius doesn't do anything illegal, but he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. He could be useful, I guess. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. All right, we know what to do. Either talk to Barla Vaughn or Harkin, trying to get into contact with uh, Garrus, Vicarian, to find evidence on Saren, so that the Council will revoke his Spectre status and he can be stopped from attacking any more human colonies.